Hey guys, um, I got quite a few messages out about being his voice, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of proceed with this one. But um, just some different things the Lord's been dealing with me about, and uh, you know, it's imperative that we're his voice. We also need to keep it into the context of life and death is in the power of the tongue, too. So and I'm going to start with that. But Lord, I call it highlighting, but you'll highlight certain things sometimes or specifics or just give me directions, details. And he said, look up the <clears throat> that song, The Sound of Silence. 1963, so I looked up, the, you know, when it was made and everything. Because I remember that as a kid. So I'm going to read a little bit of it because it kind of plays into what I've been talking about. Definitely. The Sound of Silence. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk to you again. Because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping. And the vision that was planted in my brain still remains within the sounds of silence. That's, I'm not going to read all of it because um, it's too long. I, I, if you want a copy of it or if you want to just look it up, look up Sound of Silence. Google it. 10,000 people, maybe more. People talking without speaking. People hearing without listening. People whose songs that voices never share and never no one dared disturb the sound of silence. And then and the signs and and the people bowed and prayed to a neon god they made. And the sign flashed out its warning in the words that it was forming. And the sign said the words of the prophet are wit written on the subway walls and the remnant halls, and whispered in the sound of silence. Go to that last part. The words of the prophet written on the subway walls kind of, you know, makes you wonder. Subway walls, underground, not seen. But that's where we're at, guys. It's time to be his voice and not be silent. Because someone said five years of this same-sex marriage, and look what we got in schools, in our face, proud and loud. I'm not picking on just that one sin, but I'm saying it's, you know, David Wilkerson said it's kind of militant and he's been passed away a long time ago. He didn't say it was kind of, it is. It's like in your face. 3% of the population, so one of 97% of us have to run and cow down and bow down. Same with abortion, but same with all of them, all this, look at them. Guys, it's like comedians and everybody's like, but where we have to keep it in tune with God is yes, we have to be his voice, but we also have to be his ears. That's why the Bible says so many places, he that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He wants to direct us, talk to us, lead, guide, and direct us to all truths. And he wants us to speak, but that doesn't mean we have to be in people's face either. But yet at the same time, we have to speak the truth. So a lot of prayer has to go into this, guys. But we can't sit back and just be silent because that's the opposite extreme of that pendulum. Just letting everything go and oh well, you know, and God knows. And <laughs> that's kind of a breakdown. It's a big breakdown. So the voice part. <clears throat> So what the Lord told me about some of the voices, and I'm, you know, if I sound I'm a, if I'm a little all over the map, it could be because long story short, look 
come on message on through it all and learn to trust in Jesus. But I had some brain strokes a while back. And the doctor report were moderate to severe brain loss. Showed me pictures, gone, wiped out. So I was like, <clears throat> little, little challenging, guys, okay? Honestly. But getting better. Been some miraculous healings in it. One piece of it was it wiped out my brain. I couldn't even walk, literally. <clears throat> but I haven't fell in four or five months, and I was falling all the time, literally. So it's like, okay, God. So, but, so just kind of put that into a little bit of context and give me a little bit of grace. <clears throat> um, He told me that in his last days, which we are in, definitely, this dark, lost, dying world, he said, they're going to hear, he said, they're going to hear my voice, but not see me. They're going to hear your voice, but not see you. We're going to hear their voice, but not see them. Like, okay, God, I'm listening. This is this is this is different times of prayer, guys, over periods of several years, probably. This the void this part was recent, but so I'm like, okay, God, I'm listening. Then he took me to something in the natural. 9-11. Documented all over the place. Three guys, but I'll only gonna tell probably one. But well, I don't know how I might tell them all, but one guy was a Marine and God just dealt with him to go to 9-11, go to the towers. It just had happened. It was a mess. It was a day or two after. They let him in because he's a Marine. Ex-Marine, I think. But they still let him in. He's walking through the rubble and late into the evening and there's fluff, you know, lights all around, but not everywhere <clears throat> the rescuers were all over the place but nobody was where he was at that part of where he was that's huge dilemma you know i'm sure he started calling out people's name hey i'm john with the united states marine corps i don't know if the name is john i think it was but i'm sorry to the person that if i misquoted your name <clears throat> calling out people got rescued by it they were you know 50 100 feet down they heard their voice. They didn't see, couldn't see him. He couldn't see them. They called the rescuers over. They dug him out, saved people. Same thing at the Pentagon. Some guy, I think he was in the Navy, and the place just blew up. He ran into the fiery parts of the building. That some of them were still burning a little bit, but there's smoke everywhere. He said he couldn't see. Started calling people out. <clears throat> They heard his voice and they came to how oh, they got rescued. They heard his voice and came to the safety. Same thing happened on the towers. Older white business guy and an older black business guy. And the black business guy was trapped. And the white business guy was, he was fortunate enough to be right by the step, stairways. And he was going to bolt. Plane blew up, smoke everywhere. Probably just glad to be alive. I'm out, you know. I said, no, I'm going to stay. He started calling out for people. That, the, the, the black guy had to literally, him and the black guy had to tear down through a sheetrock wall to get him out because there was a wall that separated him. And it's dark and smoke and, you know, danger everywhere, probably. I mean, imagine. Heard his voice. Couldn't see him. Physically couldn't see him because of the smoke. Literally couldn't see him because of the wall physically and literally too. Blocking, stopping, so... We are his voice, guys. So even this Facebook stuff, you know, on the YouTube and all this other stuff, it's like, I don't want to do any of this. But the Lord told me to do it. <clears throat> told me a year ago to build a website. I don't even know how I did. It's out there. It's on Wix. It's under JesusIsAliveInAmerica.com. YouTube, I was already doing. That's all free. Facebook, they're, they're all free, but still, I had to pay somebody to help me. But... <clears throat> Did everything for under a grand, guys. Shoestring budget. Just type in Jesus is alive in America. Just Google it. We come up all over the place. But so what I do on Facebook a lot 
a lot of stuff is reposted from others, you know, from other friends that kind of just blew up. So I'm, I'm still, still working on it, guys. So, you know, like I said, give me some grace and some time or come help me. I really could use some computer help, honestly. That's the biggest thing that I need. A partner with me or whatever. I've got some ideas and some things and I'm working on some businesses and, um, So I can get it, be his voice and get it out there. But the Facebook thing, I re, redo it because some of them are really good guys. And I'm trying to encourage those pe other people, for one, and encourage others. Because some of them that I put on there, it's like, man, everything from a Charlie Brown to a, to a picture of a dog to a to some really, really deep, powerful scriptures and sayings and things that people have been given, that the Lord has given them. So I want to encourage them to be the voice, to get it out there. A little, I'm a little choosy, okay, of course, but I'm not trying to be the Jesus police either, but I still have to do, you know, do that with some discernment. But at the same time, I'm getting feedback from people that I didn't even think were watching. Some of them I don't even know that, some of them I personally know that probably aren't maybe even not necessarily just not going to church, but I don't know where they are with God. But they're still commenting on him. It's still reaching him. It's still, so it's like, it's just time to be his voice, guys, and not the sound of silence. The world is trying to do it, loud and proud. If you don't, Say that lady that was said that I won't sing if you don't to the Salvation Army if you don't cow down to the, my agenda and the, the militant agenda if you don't believe how I want you to believe I'm not going to sing then don't honestly but <clears throat> but you can feel the urgency in it guys because there is an urgent hour because people are dying literally. I don't know that it's going to last another day, another hundred years. I don't know. I really don't see a hundred years, but, but there's people that it's, the hospitals are f filled up right now. People are dying in the hospitals as we speak. So to them, it's real urgent. Nursing homes, pretty urgent. You don't know, guys. So just because it's not, not going to end today or tomorrow, or we don't even know. Man, there's crazy stuff going on all around us in the world, and so you don't know what's going to happen. Iran's acting nutty. North Korea's acting nutty. We're acting a little nutty towards them, too. But <clears throat> we need to be his voice. <clears throat> A year ago, a little over a year ago, a year and a half ago, I was going on a trip. The Lord told me to go <clears throat> on a trip to Pennsylvania, of all places, 2,000 miles away, in prayer. A little town called Layton, so I went, but didn't want to go. But anyhow, part of the journey was going to Knoxville, Tennessee, so, which we did. But just before we left, he gave me a scripture. It was, it was um, Psalms 29. I think it's three, three or four. The voice of the Lord is as thunder over many waters. And then he said that we were his voice. I was like, that's pretty cool, God. That's real cool, but that's your voice. You know, that's real cool. But then in Revelations, it talks about it. And I'm starting to find more and more where we are as thunder and his voice, guys. He called us to be. We have to do it with obedience, with wisdom, with prudence, with guidance, with direction from above, prayer, supplication, and fasting, bringing it to him. How do I say it, God? When do I say it? What do I say, God? There's so many people, instead of being a bunch of talking heads, people are spitting stuff out right and left even hiding behind the gospel, phony stuff, 
these scriptures are part of scriptures and claiming it to be God. We slap a label on it. We're trying to hoodwink God. I call it the Captain Crunch Christianity, but it's, you know, it, it you know looks good, smells good, tastes good in a bright, shiny yellow package or whatever. You might even get a prize. No nutritional value. Nothing to it. Actually bad for you. Um, you know, I, I can prove that we, you know, I mean, we go to church for 45 minutes or two hours or whatever. We hoodwink God. I did my time and, you know. I'll give you a perfect example, guys, because this is part of, you know, I've got one out there that there's a storm coming to America, but it's a storm of idols. And he gave me a bunch of idols and some of them are coming tearing down. One of them, one of them is money. I'm not saying that you're evil and demonic if you have money. That's not what I'm saying, so don't go there. It's what you do with it. What's in your heart. Because it's really not yours anyhow. It's something that God's just giving you to, as, a re, as, a, as a source to resource to help others. You don't need a $10 million compound for you and your kids. And a... And a $40,000 conference table and a $20,000. I looked at one list of just one preachers and all these antiques and stuff. Eh, you know, great. If they got the money, great. But well, a lot of times it's all twisted up into the ministry stuff too. So it's not really their money. I wouldn't have, it was a $40,000 um, dresser or $20,000 dresser, $20,000. Man, I wouldn't have gave 200 bucks for it. It was very nice and pretty, but I would have shied away from that if I saw it someplace marked for 200 bucks. I would have, been, I'd have, I'd have walked away and came back later and saw it to see if it was a little cheaper, maybe 150 or something, but, you know, I mean, so we try to hoodwink God because we want something. Okay, so uh, back to this dollar. Here's one that's a perfect example. And yes, it's going to probably hit a sacred cow a little bit. It might even run, out, run over with the bus. In God we trust. Back of the dollar bill. Great, awesome. In front of it's a dead people, a dead, dead president. Yeah, great, awesome. I'm glad that George Washington was George Washington, but he's gone. There's this weird e sayings on there. Some people say they're messianic, messianic, whatever. There's that pyramid with the eyeball. Man, so, guys, no more. That's what this storm is coming. There's going to be a separation. God's kingdom or the devil's kingdom. Nobody wants to talk about the devil. Nobody wants to talk about sin. Nobody wants to talk about. You know, that's why I post that thing from Billy Graham. We're trying so hard not to offend anyone but God. <clears throat> so I am going to end with this, but, you know, so hoodwinking him. God's not going to be mocked anymore, guys. I'm sorry. Talk is cheap. Some people say stuff out of the sides of their mouths and then but then when the rubber meets the road and the reality comes and that's why it says out of your hearts perceive the issues of life gets a little ugly they said all the right stuff the captain crunch christianity some of them don't some of them don't even use the bible but there's some really good stuff out there too guys that's what i'm saying you know the really good stuff that's why we need to be his voice we need to be the people that stand up and the right the body of christ and the righteous and say the things that god's telling us to say because they mean something don't take it lightly even that one even that scripture matthew 20 read it guys nobody wants to talk everybody wants to talk about and it's great the gospel is good news but read it, what he did to the people that took it lightly. Read Ezekiel 33. I think it's, 
20 something I, I put it out there but it said that he wishes that no man would perish but they'd all come to repentance he wants us to turn guys all of us you just put one put one out there on Facebook you could live in or under the outhouse doghouse or the penthouse doesn't matter to God go read Matthew 20 we're all the same guys that's so why I put a lot of this stuff out, cause it's not nothing to do with me. I'm just directional, but I'm also called to be a watchman, and I'm warning people. There's a storm kind of minds. Are, man, some of them already hit me really bad. Five or six of them. You know that that scripture in there where Jesus was in the boat and peace be still, and you know they thought they were going to perish. And Master, don't you care? Or you're asleep. He's like, he gets up, rebukes the wind and the waves, and everything's peaceful and calm. Man, went about five or six storms, and some of them are fairly ugly. Some of them are self-inflicted. Some of them are me that caused them, created them. I'm the centerpiece of it, and it hurts. Some of them others. Some of them lies and twisted up stuff. Some of them even demonic. I'm not going to share the details, probably, because it's going to hurt people. I'm not going to do that. Good. My flesh wants to. I want to be that voice. I want to be give somebody a piece of my mind on some of them. Set the record straight. But one of them, it's like, man, God... Like I said, you know, Jesus was in the boat and, they, you know, water's coming in. Man, why am I can't even see the boat? It sunk a long time ago. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> so I was like, man, you know, nothing to bail out here. <clears throat> so, but I'm not like asking, you know, prayer is what I'm asking for, guys, not him, not, not, I, don't even, I don't even know about empathy or sympathy or anything, I just, you know, just pray for me, because God's going to see me through these, okay, you know, I know he is, he already showed me some things out of it, some things that happen one week, the next week, something, so many, some miraculous things happen in totally areas where I wouldn't think they were going to happen, and it was like, okay, God, I'll take that, I'll take that victory, of something I've been praying for for 20, 30 years. Boom. Yeah, God. I know he's going to do the rest of this stuff too. So it's like, okay, God, I'm, I'm in. It's just like, I'm not even, yeah, they hurt. Yeah, it's messy. And yeah, it's, you know, kind of it's a, sort of a little perplexing, but it's all good. It's like, but it's like, okay, God, you're large and in charge. Definitely. But he's dealing with me about the connectivity of the body. Giving me some businesses, ideas. One of them isn't going to take a whole lot, but it's going to take some resources, but he already provided that. Starting to do that. But then one of them, he's like, I want you to take 90% and give it away. And the other 10%, my eyes will be upon it and I'm going to bless it. Okay, God, well, you know, one of the storms kind of is that, you know, I need a financial breakthrough. I mean, we're not like we're destitute or anything and not even close, but still need some things to get straightened out. <clears throat> so it's kind of like, man, that's kind of a little opposite. But yet it's not. <clears throat> so, and, and all along, a lot of them are kind of designed. I don't say I'm getting this is the point I'm getting to, guys. Some of these storms and things are designed to stop my voice because the enemy doesn't want, and he's trying to stop your voice too. Husbands and wives argue all the time over the communication gap, not listening to each other. Churches scatter and become something they never were intended to be because people aren't listening and the voices aren't heard and people are just cut off and it's the less than mentality a lot. 
I mean, I can say that because I see it as real prevalent across the board in a lot of this stuff. There's some really good preachers out there that get cut off because people are like, you know, well, they're too, too, you know, stuff gets said. It's not even true. I'll end with this. Okay. One preacher that I put on there, often, more often than not, big name. I'm not going to name his name. You'll, you'll get the gist of it. You'll see right into it. Ooh, a few years ago, there were some hurricanes. One mega church closed. It wouldn't even open their doors, and it was right in their backyard. Big building. People have lost everything. Floods everywhere. Homes destroyed. They just needed a place to to hold up, get a meal, and get back on that, you know, get their bearings straight. But everything just got destroyed. They didn't do anything for a day or two, maybe uh, maybe even longer. I don't really remember the details of it, but till the media just ripped them apart. And then it became a public nightmare. And then it was a bunch of backpedaling hogwash voice, but a voice of deception. <laughs> Lies, mistruths, reasons why. We're his voice, guys, but we had to be birthed through prayer, supplication, dedication. Clean heart, pure hands. <clears throat> and this other preacher bought somebody a house that went through the hurricane. Their son, I just reposted it. Their son was just ecstatic over it. The man passed away shortly thereafter, but man, it really touched his kid's heart. Bottom house. On one side. One voice, and the other voice, supposed voice, that's got a lot of people following them, wouldn't do squat. Busy talking, blah, 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 white noise, you know? <clears throat> so it's time to speak up, guys. Quit being the sound, let the sound of silence silence your voice, but at the same time, birth it in prayer. What's he telling you to do? Do it, say it, be that voice. I'm going to say stuff and, you know, 90% of it, hopefully 100% of it's not, but, you know, it's going to be correct. There may be a little error there. That's why you got, you know, ways to comment. Got an email. You send me an email. Hey, straighten it out. But I'm going to stand one day before God, Jesus, and Jesus, and I'm going to have to answer for what I say. And so are you. So, be his voice. One of the things I put out there, which I got six, eight months ago in prayer, was many the Lord told me he was very specific, and now it's all over the internet. But <clears throat> nothing to do. I'm not. He said, "Be his, that we were his voice, his choice to be his voice to the born, for the born and the unborn." And he said, "Put make sure you put born first. And like, you know, because it was about, kind of related to the abortion issue. And I was like, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense, guys. But he said, no, it does make a lot of sense. <clears throat> because the enemy, if he can't kill you, he's trying to destroy your life. Like how many people are, you know, have issues from childhood in their 50s and 60s and 80s or whatever, you know, just hurts and just, I call them hooks. But, <clears throat> you know, it's like a trap door the enemy set up in your heart. Some of them just happened recently, maybe in your life. Some of them have been happening for years. Some of them happened and, you know, it could be anything, guys, from, you know, some type of really bad traumatic stuff, sexual abuse, uh, divorces, um, just alcoholism, just Lots of pain and suffering and things, guys. But they're, the enemy's designed to, it's a ploy to seek, kill, and destroy you. Seek you out later on in life. Steal, kill, and destroy. Steal your dreams. Eventually, the main goal is to kill you. Destroy you. Destroy your relationships. Destroy your credibility. Destroy, 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 destroy. Destroy your church, destroy your ministry, destroy your marriage, destroy your career, just whatever. <clears throat> the 
that's why it's so imperative that, you know, mom's 40 years, I'm saved in 1980, so, you know, yeah, I got a little bit of experience, guys, I can kind of say that it had nothing to do with me, it just was a timing thing, but <clears throat> be his voice. And that's why I'm on Facebook, too. I don't want to do any of that. I don't, you know, it can it can go the other way. It can be the opposite. But, you know, you can be that fake voice, that white noise, that trash, that garbage dump. Pollution. So you have to be very careful. You have to use the spirit of discernment for what you're hearing. But that's why it says, he that had an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. So discern it. Don't even listen to me. Go to your source. Your source is that rivers of living water, but it should be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. And uh, the vessels that are His voice, listen, there's some good vessels out there, guys. There really is. Men and women. So, I'm going to need to end it with this. Um, so, Love you guys. Uh, there's more I want to say, but I just, this one's already too long. So love you guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.